So fluid mechanics, we can, let, let's actually begin with a definition. Now, here's the definition of a fluid. Any material which assumes the shape of any container in which it is placed. Now, this does apply for liquids and gases. Now, fluids, we can actually model as a function um, by setting up a coordinate system. We can, we can study streams and rivers and uh, pipe flow all by using our Cartesian coordinate system. So let's set that up to give us a proper introduction to fluid mechanics. So say we had three-dimensional Cartesian coordinate, regular axes, x, y, z, and on it you can study this, this fluid flowing. We don't know which way it's flowing, but it, it's flowing. Um, and say we dropped a little particle into this stream or river or pipe or something, and it, it, it went from a certain it went from a certain initial position to another position. We'll call this position one, we'll call this position two. Now, this particle actually moved a distance in the x direction. It moved a distance in the y direction and it also moved a, di a distance in the z-direction because it is a three-dimensional flow. So we can say the particle moved x plus dx a little bit in the x-direction, y plus dy a little bit in the y-direction, and z plus dz a little bit in the z-direction. Now we can model this small change as um, dr. dr is equal to dxi plus dyj plus dzk. It moved a little bit in the x, and a little bit in the y, a little bit in the z. This particle from 1 to 2. Now, this fluid we can define as a function. I'll do that in a different color. I like green. Let's call that little function df. And that, I'll just define it for you, that's going to be equal to the partial of the function in respect to x times dx plus the partial of the function in respect to y dy plus the partial of the function in respect to uh, z, d, z. That's just d, z. That's not a partial. This is a partial. Okay? And these three components are actually the components of the differential position. And that's what we defined here. That's the the, those dx, dy, dz are the, are the components of the differential displacement position. Okay? And here, let me do that in a different color. These other three components, the partials, if you remember from multivariable calculus, that is equal to del f. Del of the function we're defining. Of the function of whatever fluid we're studying. Now, we can... Mm, let's do purple. Let's define a few more things. We can define... Mm, DF. DF. We, we did define it here, but uh, let's, let's try to put a little bit of multivariable calculus in our definition for our fluid. DF is going to be equal to del F dotted with DR, okay? And we know del F is, is um, DF DXI plus DF, oh, I'm sorry. Oh, no, that's right, that's right. But the, these should actually be partials. The partial of f in respect to x, i, the partial of f in respect to y, plus the partial of f, 
with respect to uh, ZK, okay? And our, our del is just the operator, right? So it'd be the partial in respect to X, I, plus the partial in respect to Y, J, plus the partial in respect to Z, K, okay? So you can kind of see if you multiply this, or multiplied this by F, you would get that, right? Now, I think we're ready to move on to velocity fields, and velocity fields are kind of the big thing in fluid mechanics. So we can, we can uh, define that. Let's, let's do that, and we can use green. I, I really like green, by the way. The velocity field. Let's talk about the velocity field. The velocity field depends on time, and it depends on the position of whatever particle we dropped into the fluid, right? And all of this is equal to the velocity at a certain time, at a certain x coordinate, at a certain y coordinate, and at a certain z coordinate, right? Um, some books, they use the, uh, you see this as a vector, a little vector arrow. Um, some books break this and they use the U, V, W notation for the X, Y, or the, you know, the I, J, and K components. I, I, honestly, I like to use V, X, V, Y, V, Z for the individual components of this velocity field. So, e either way, U, V, W, U is equal to V, X, V is equal to V, Y, and W is equal to V, Z. So, we can... Let's, let's uh, rewrite this. The velocity field at a certain time, at a certain position, is equal to Vx at a certain time and position in the i direction, plus Vy at a certain time, at a certain position in the j, plus Vz at a certain time in the um, z direction, k hat. Okay. Now the velocity field. I think I have a little little note card here. Well, a formal definition. We'll just put that there. A velocity field gives the time t velocity of the fluid particle. That particle. This particle which is instantaneously located at or passing through the point P is equal to X, Y, Z. And that, that's this. This is, this is a certain point and this is a certain time. That's what the velocity field is. And from the velocity field, you can find the position and you can also find the acceleration. So you would derive the velocity to find the acceleration of that certain particle or you could integrate velocity, the velocity field, to find uh, the position. And just uh, two more things I want to talk about before this video ends is um, steady flow and unsteady flow. We'll just use the back of this paper. Steady flow and unsteady flow. Very quick, steady flow. Steady flow. It's the velocity field it's when the velocity field does not include t. So an example of this would be the velocity is equal to x squared i plus xyj plus 3k. You see there's no time variable, no time variable t. So that's a steady flow. At any time, the velocity field is always this. An unsteady flow as you guessed it, it's exactly the opposite. It's when the velocity field, here's an example, velocity field does depend on time. So at every different time, the particle is moving at some different speed. 
or it's somewhere else. So steady flow does depend, or does not depend on time, and unsteady flow does depend on time. Alright, we'll do some examples in the next video.